So what if, what about um, on television? What are your what are your young people watching on television that scares them about birth? Are they watching some American TV? Yeah. 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 Woman on her back. Woman on her back. Screaming from the hospital. Okay. So. All right, so we're going to talk about the public education problem when you're getting the negative TV. How do we replace negative TV? Let's say that's one problem. Let's say problem. So scary TV. So how do we address that? Well, then let's watch animals give birth on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And so let's spread the word. Um, so the antidote, <coughs> uh, use the social media uh, to get YouTube. YouTube animal performances <laughs> birth. And then you have to give them the the, the right ones because you could see some scary animal birth too. So mm -hmm. send them to the elephant, send them to the chimp, or any other good ones you find. And then, oh, there's another one too that's called partopodalico. Partopodalico is a breech birth. Why don't I write that on here? Let's see. This is Google. That means birth in Spanish. Mm. And then there's a space there. Podolico means breech birth. And then <coughs> you get this um, parto humanizado, something like that, from Ecuador. And so you'll see a doctor who's very, he's got enormous hands. You never see the woman's face, you just see her backside, but you see the baby come out with the feet first. And the doctor um, is very, he doesn't pull. He just waits with his hands and the baby falls into his hands. That's good to see. You see no blood. Not scary. The mother's on her, her knees. So, so these are all antidotes. And then maybe someday you could see something on the regular TV that isn't scary. Uh, maybe, you know, you'll make up, somebody will do a documentary about how we should stop putting, getting everybody addicted to watching scary TV and getting the adrenaline high. So then let's talk about the education of the young. So how many of you go into to school and talk to, you know, twelve year olds, fourteen year olds, and so forth? You could. You could you you midwives as if you have a lot of spare time, but <laughs> but maybe there are some retired midwives that aren't doing all night births and maybe they could, you know, become this kind of talker that go into the schools. I found this was really good. <clears throat> There's a Oh, there's another birth I just found out about. There's a website, and it's called um, Happy Birth. Let's see. It's French. I should probably see if I can find this and then put this information and give it to Ulsa or MP for something or other. I don't know if we can find it. We'll try to find it. It's, it's a, a French woman who is leaning back. You see the baby crowning. Uh, she looks really, really pretty. Uh, you see her husband's back over here. Occasionally you see the midwife, but she does nothing. And this woman is pushing her baby out. The baby's crowning. Nobody's telling her anything, and then she just, she's ecstatic. It's just so 
beautiful to watch. And then when the baby falls out, they make a sheet so the baby lands, or they, the husband comes, and then the baby goes right up on the mother, and then she just squeals with laughter and joy and holds the baby to her, just like, that was the most fun I ever had in my life. <laughs> <laughs> and you really want to see her. Uh, and here's the name of the, the French doctor. He just died um, last August, I think. I just had some, one of my Facebook friends um, told me about him, and so I can put that on Facebook. Is anybody my Facebook friend? Yeah, so you can find it there. It's, we put it up recently. And so spread that all around. That is so powerful. If you show that, if you show that to a class of young people and they've been afraid, they lose the fear. And that's what the young people in um, Bregan's told me. No, in, yeah, Bregan's. They said, we were afraid and now we're not afraid. We're not afraid to have a baby. Well, that's a good thing for a European country that's not keeping its population high enough to sustain its culture. Why don't more women want to have baby number two? Well, if it was a nightmarish, traumatic situation with baby number one, well, some people are going to decide against it, even though you have a lot of social support for your moms and dads, as you do here. Yeah. There is a book project uh, where students are collecting 100 positive birth stories. Mm -hmm. 100 positive birth stories? Yeah, yeah. Good. Because some it's, of it could be birthed in hospital, we have to see that too. That, that could be uh, fun, joyous. Empowering birth. Empowering birth, yeah. yeah. They're collecting those and yeah. uh, giving them uh, a book. Yeah. Uh, also part of the solution to yeah. talk about these happy births. Yeah. Because <laughs> Sometimes people will think that you're bragging or that you're lying oh, right. or that right. you think you're better than anybody else. That's right. If you talk about the good birth. Mm -hmm. But the one who has a scary birth, they yeah. think it's common. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they, 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 they feel like you're attacking them yes. if you say you had a happy birth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's another great movie called Birth in Water. Birth in Water. And yeah. From Bridge. Belgium, maybe? Yeah. yeah. From Russia. Russia. From Russia. So you, okay. you write, write on YouTube, yeah. Bath in Water, Russian. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to see what's possible. Um, we should see what's, in possi uh, what's possible so that we don't have the, our mind blocked, that it's got to be hellish and torture and like that. I have another one. Is there a UK website? called uh, Tell Me a Good Birth Story. Tell Me a Good Birth Story. And it's a network of women that and they, mm -hmm. you can email them and tell them what you're afraid of and they will match you with a birth buddy uh -huh. who has had oh. maybe a, a good wow. experience. Yeah. yeah. With, but maybe, a, you know, maybe they've had a, I don't know, a good experience yeah. with, that prevented a tear or something. That's good. Yeah. And then you can email yeah. that person and get some positive that's really good. Yeah. They have, um, I, I went to the Guardian website once and read something about women that are afraid of birth and pregnancy. And this was, the article was published in the Guardian, the newspaper, all three or four years ago. And it was about fear of birth, meaning that women are so afraid they'll never become pregnant. Even though if they love this man, they'll say, if you love me, you'll give up wanting to be a father because I'm just too afraid and I can't change this. And they say, when I see a pregnant woman, I feel nauseous, I feel like I'm going to vomit. <coughs> and they say amazingly weird things from my point of view. They'll say, <coughs> and the, the thought of the baby being a parasite in there, and they use the word parasite, but where do they get these strange ideas? But several of them said it was from a film they saw as a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old. And so we're really traumatizing some of the children. It seemed like somebody got some bad ideas in the UK a while back. And uh, they were, I was surprised by how many people are afflicted by this. It's a really pathology, and they don't think there's a cure for it. And there is. 
watch these things. <laughs> watch them enough time to desensitize. And I think the brain can clear itself. So um, that's why I think that's so important, the young people. And really, you know, that every Swedish school child could see happy birth, even if they only saw, if they didn't even see humans, if they saw nature does a good job. You've got to get thinking. Uh, maybe nature didn't mess up with us. Maybe it's human culture that has taught us to think our bottoms are disgusting, inadequate, uh, not made well. Uh, we actually have some people who have uh, doctorates in anthropology that say it's because we walk upright. Mm. And that's why we can't give birth, because nature couldn't give us a big enough pelvis to deal with the colossal head of the human. It's just junk pseudoscience at its worst. And, and the trouble is that masses of people who even teach courses in universities believe this stuff, believe fictitious stuff. And so we have to just keep hammering on what the truth is and show people. And I think we have to mock and ridicule. Okay, so let's talk about mocking and ridiculing. <laughs> and I was interested because this is so, some of Gene Sharp's tactics are uh, to mock and ridicule. <laughs> no, we have to be careful. You don't, you don't mock the woman. You, you can't make the woman who had a cesarean feel judged. So you have to be so, so careful. Uh, and, and I don't think any one person should charge out there and say, we should do this. You have to ask a lot of people who've had cesareans, even, who are your friends, is this going to make you feel like a failure? Yeah. We have to be so careful. But we really have to turn this thing around for the young.